Hello everyone and welcome to Sutton's Days and to this week's canning chat. Super excited about all these questions. You guys have been, you worked hard this week. You really did. These are some killer questions. So I'm looking forward to getting to them all. Remember, if you have a question that you would like answered in next week's canning chat, toss it in the comments section below. Um, I did not get to all the questions this week. I filled six pages, pretty full. So um, if I didn't get to it, I apologize. Throw it in next week's, say second time, and I will do my very best to get to it. Um, I know I said that I would put timestamps. <laughs> I'm running a little late. It's been a busy work week, so um, that's not going to happen for this video. But there's a lot of really good information, so I hope you listen all the way through. And if you have an immediate question that needs an immediate answer, um, email me or message me through Facebook, and I will do my best to get to you as soon as possible. Are you ready? Let's get started. Our first question is from Diamond Gardener. Uh, I ran into this a couple weeks ago. I had some hamburger that I wanted to frizzle and then can the way you do yours. I also had some chicken that was raw that I wanted to raw pack. I know it's important to use hot jars with hot contents, cool jars with raw meat or cold contents. Um, would it have been all right to mix the two types of jars in the same canning session? I'll save your answer for the next time. Um, okay. Theoretically, yes. Okay. Because they're still going to require the same amount of time at the same amount of pressure for where you're at. What you're probably going to want to do though, um, is if you have a 23 quart Presto where you can double stack, you'll want to put the warm ones down into the warm water and the cool ones on the second rack that keeps them separate. If you put cold jars into hot water, you risk thermal shock. That's the biggest issue with doing both of them at the same time. If you have a way to separate them adequately, um, then you should be fine. A really good question. Um, Katie Alber says, I have a Bloody Mary mix that I would love to can, but I am unsure if it's possible or what method to use. Um, and then she gave me the recipe. So I, I can't say that this recipe is safe to use. I would go to the National Center for Home Food Preservation. The link will be down below, okay? And they actually have a Bloody Mary mix um, recipe. To take a look at so take a look at that see if it comes close to yours the issue is the issue is the pH level okay and they have the proper time they have all the information for the recipe that they tested so if it goes too far off of that um, you know where it, it would change the pH level then that is something that is not tested and thus not approved theta more my question is is it okay to recan commercially prepared food I got this question a lot this week, a lot. And so I'm going to give you the real simple. Um, there is no pr proven safe method for recanning commercially canned food. Now, if it's an ingredient in something else that you created, that's one thing. But if you go out and buy a number 10 can because it was cheap, um, plan on using that number 10 can. Don't plan on recanning it because the pH level may not be where it needs to be for canning at home. Home canning and commercial canning are two different animals. Huge, huge difference, okay? So um, I, I do not understand nor do I recommend uh, buying number 10 cans and then recanning the ingredients. There is no way to ensure that you are doing it safely based on the ingredients in that can. Then there is the additional fact that you are reheating that and degrading the nutritional value that's in there. There's no savings if it's not worth anything. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's not something that I would recommend doing. Kind of doesn't make sense. I'm sure you'll find 20 people out there doing it. Um, but are they doing it safely? Is it safe to feed to your family? That's a decision you have to make. Uh, Mary Ann says, uh, if I canned meat and chicken, but I'm questioning myself, considering all sealed, look and smell good when they are open, is there a way that I can recook, heat up for a specific time to ensure there is no botulism? Okay, Marianne, so first I'm going to tell you to trust the process. If you canned these per the guidelines at the National Center for Home Food Preservation, you did it for the right time, at the right pressure, for the altitude where you are, then there is no issue if they sealed. None. Okay, if they have a genuine real seal on them, there is no issue. You have nothing to fear. Nothing. Um, if you don't trust it, back in the day, they used to say to cook it for 10 minutes, I think at 240 degrees. And again, you are 
you know, uh, if when in doubt, throw it out. Otherwise, trust the process. You got this. Uh, Terry Henderson, okay, Terry Henderson got a, um, got a $2 yard sale Harvest Gold, congrats, um, a 12 quart Presto, uh, complete with the original micro print manual, um, after, let's see, do, 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 okay, so among my new canning jars are some quarter and half and squatter anchor hocking jars. Between the two canners, I now have two shelf discs, two racks, and I'm interested in multi-level stacking canning, both water bath and pressure canner. Of course, I would like to can some of this and some of that in the same batch. I realize there is a difference between can and may, uh, new school and old school. Will you address the fundamentals of multi-level canning, water bath and pressure canner style? Okay, so um, if you have a 23 quart Presto pressure canner, there's a rack on the bottom, then the jars, then a rack, then the jars. That's as high as you go, okay? Um, if you are doing a whole bunch of four ounce jars, I think you can go three high. Uh, if you are in a 16 quart pressure canner and you're doing the four ounce jars, I think you can go two high, but it's always rack on the bottom jars, another rack, then jars. Okay. That's pressure canning. Pressure canning is easy. Um, don't pressure can things. Don't pressure can carrots and chicken. Okay. In different jars because the chicken is in there for significantly longer than the carrots are. And so the carrots will be sig very, I mean, just horribly overprocessed. It, it won't be a good product. Trust the process, follow the process. Water bath canning, I do not recommend double stacking for water bath canning. I don't find that there is any benefit to it at all. And you have to have a remarkably deep pot, okay? Um, because the water has to be no less than one inch above the top of the top jar. Um, that means that the jars on the bottom are way down there and you'll probably burn yourself trying to get them out So stick with one level on the water bath canning and two levels on pressure canning. You're good to go um, And Terry Henderson has another question. Can you talk about how the different types of potatoes can the size of the potato pieces the width or thickness uh, if you carefully pack them for minimal airspace is that good or bad thing in between um, okay, so th there's a lot to this question. So one, I'm going to be sure to put the link down below directly to canning potatoes in the National Center for Home Food Preservation. As far as what kinds of potatoes, um, it's really a bummer because, you know, typical Idaho potato, that kind of thing, Michigan potatoes, um, they are, they're the ones you find on sale. They're the ones that are the cheapest, right? Um, but they have the most starch content in them. And so when you can them, because you do have to blanch them, okay? When you can them, you still end up with a lot of loose starch. It looks really cloudy. It's not a deal breaker. It really isn't. You just, when you open the jar, you just rinse them off, get rid of that extra starch, and then do what you do with them. Um, if you are canning golden potatoes or red potatoes, go for the bigger ones because, yes, they do have to be peeled. They are a root vegetable, okay? Um, so you're going to want to peel them and you're still going to want to blanch them. You're going to want to follow the National Center for Home Food Preservation guidelines on this. And, uh, as far as putting them into the jar, I fill the jar and then you add the liquid. Do not skip that part. Okay. Um, the liquid is, it acts as a conduit to make sure that the heat gets all the way through the vegetable. Don't skip the liquid. Um, so you put the vegetable in there, you put the liquid in there, you debubble, Wipe the rims, put your lid on, put your ring on, put it in the canner. Um, it, I love canned potatoes. There are some things that I don't like them for that other people do. This is something that you're going to have to test out yourself. Nobody's got your taste buds but you. Um, I like them to throw on a, you know, a cookie sheet and broil them in the oven, put them in the air fryer. Uh, I like to add them to soups. I like to add them to pot pies, that kind of thing. Um... I like to make them into soup. Oh, that is my number one favorite thing to do with canned potatoes. Um, are you going to make great mashed potatoes? No, they're probably going to be gummy. Are you going to make great potato salad? No, they're probably going to be gummy. Um, but, you know, there are other people who I see make potato salad and say they love it. So it's something you're going to have to find out for yourself, for your taste buds. Um, but definitely check out the link down below on canning potatoes. And hopefully that will answer your question. Mona... Zuniga, Z Zuniga, Zuniga. God, I butchered that. I'm so sorry. Um, I love to water bath salsa, but don't like to add vinegar or lemon juice. 
because we're not crazy for that flavor. It's for, not crazy for the flavor it has. So can I add a quarter teaspoon of citric acid to my pint jars to make it safe? I was advised not to, but wanted your opinion. I don't know who advised you not to. Um, I think that you can, but I want you to check to find out how much. I'm not sure that a quarter teaspoon is enough or too much, you know, um, because again, it's about the acidity, especially with water bath canning. It's very much about, about the acidity. So honestly, the citric acid has the potential to make it more acidic, which I pick up on. I, I can't, I can't use this stuff. I really can't. Um, I've tried it and I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't, my taste buds don't pick up that little bit of vinegar or lemon juice. Um, cause it's really not a lot. So I would, uh, I would check the site to see what they recommend for how much. Again, trust the National Center for Home Food Preservation. I'll put a link down below. Okay. Uh, Marilyn Hill, can you can a number 10 can of tomatoes that you get in the store? No. Uh, Char Van Kirk, rust on rings, new ones, small spots. Can I use the rings or throw them out? Hi, Char. Welcome to Sutton's Days. I want you to take a look at some of my canning videos recently. Um, I mentioned this in just about all of them recently because I have ugly rings because my rings get rusty and you can use them until you can't screw them on anymore. They are a tool. They are not an engagement ring. So definitely you can use them until you can't screw them on anymore. It does not affect anything. Okay, uh, Jean, Jean, your last name starts with a K, I'm, I'm wimping out. Uh, can you please explain the difference between the jiggler and a weighted gauge and why with the jiggler I would can at 10 pounds and at 11 with the weighted piece? Okay, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to give you a link to a video down below, okay, and it will have your name, <laughs> okay? So check that out. I walk you through the whole process. It's perfectly safe. They address it throughout the National Center for Home Food Preservation as safe canning. So go ahead. Um, I love the Jiggler. It's freeing. It's wonderful. I'll put a link to that too. Matthew McLennan. Uh, would, could you talk to us about how you deal with fat liquid when opening a can of meat? I opened my first can of roast beef tonight. It was delicious. Way more than I expected. I need to can more but felt paralyzed for a second trying to think of how to deal with all that. I ended up making a flour butter roux with a bit less butter than usual and gradually adding the liquid from the jar. Would be curious what you do. You just explained what I do. That's, that's exactly what I do. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's really good stuff. Uh, worm 556. I'm a couple months into canning. You got this. What are your thoughts on canning number 10 cans of cheese into pints? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Pressure can or water bath? No. Absolutely, absolutely, never, ever, no. No. Now, that being said, I'm sure that you're going to find videos on how to do it. Okay? Um, is it safe? I wouldn't feed it to my family. Probably doesn't even, no. No. Absolutely not. Number one, <clears throat> it's a dairy product. Okay? Number two, it is thick. It is dense. There's no way uh, that it has been tested to make sure that the heat that's necessary to get into the center of that jar to kill off any bad stuff um, has occurred. Um, number three, no. Just don't do it. It's not a necessity of life. Don't do it. Uh, Annette Sanchez, I'm crazy and don't know how to look for things. I have been looking for information on canning fish broth. Girlfriend, I got you covered. Are you ready for this one? Um, I don't, I kind of have you covered. How's that? I kind of have you covered. So they have a shrimp stock or clam broth and it can only be canned in eight ounce jars, half pints. Okay. Uh, half inch headspace process at 10 pounds for 20 minutes, hot pack only, um, adjust for altitude, you know, depending on where you're at. Um, that literally is it. There is no other fish or seafood stock that has been approved anywhere. I've checked all of the, uh, uh, yeah, extensions. I've checked. Nobody's done it. Nobody has done anything to approve it. And it's something that you really want to be very careful with, right? Because fish has a lot of microorganisms in it, which is why 
uh, when we can fish, it's for 100 minutes and not for 75 for a pint, okay? We're making sure we're going to kill absolutely everything in there. Um, so you can do shrimp stock or clam broth, but not just fish. But it was a really great question. You made me go searching for it, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, bah, 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 where am I at? Okay, um, Laura Flarson. I get the ingredient canning. I, I get the don't can frozen meat, but what about frozen vegetables and like beef stew? Um, can for the duration of the meat. If you're canning it for the duration of the meat, you're fine. Yeah, go ahead. But again, you're going to get less in there than if you put in unfrozen, if you put in thawed. Because thawed has the ability to fit more into the jar, you know, so you'll get less. Um, Dina Kuhn says, with time limitations, space limitations, and skill limitations, I hate gardening, I often need an efficient way to can items. So I buy from the farmer's market a lot of one item and can them multiple ways. One weekend was carrots. So I did carrots, carrots and onion broth, orange glazed carrots, maple glazed carrots, carrot soup, etc. Sometimes I don't have time to both cook and can. I have seen people open number 10 cans of something, split it up, and can it in sizes that works for them. What are your thoughts on this? Nope, I've already told you. There's no approved method. Don't do it. Um... Sue L. says, I jarred 16 jars of ugly chicken tonight in wide mouth jars. Yay! Uh, when removing them from the canner, one of the jar lids and ring popped off. So I carefully screwed it back on. I marked it and plan on putting it in the fridge. Good. Um, but my question is, if it seals, would it be shelf stable? Absolutely not. Nope. No. No. You did the right thing. Put it in the fridge and eat it. It, it would not be shelf stable. Uh, Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. Uh, why are some of my jars loose when I remove them from the canner? Am I starting off with the lids too loose? No. Um, remember, you're going to put the rings on finger tight, okay? So you're not cranking them on. Now, during the canning process, part of the canning process is that the pressure helps to vacate the excess air from the jar. You can't do that if the ring is on too tight. Um, and that's what causes lids buckling. So, but because it is doing that, sometimes the, the rings are loose. It's absolutely normal and you're good. Don't worry about it. Um, Myra Pratt, can ham be canned? There is no approved method right now for canning cured meats. Dime Do Dollar says it's because they haven't tested it. So, um, that's my answer. Uh, Donna Whitbrod. When following a canning recipe, do you have to put in all the spices that are listed? Can you use different spices than listed? I'm just not sure and want my product to be safe. Yes. Spices um, spices are not part of the equation. So, yep. Mix it up. Mix it around. Eliminate. Whatever you want to do. Um, Ernestine Richardson says, I can't eat beef. Can I can a meatloaf using ground turkey since we already can ground turkey? Um... I don't think there isn't, and I know I have a video on it, so I apologize, but um, there isn't an approved method for canning ground turkey, okay? And I do not understand canning meatloaf. I, I don't. I don't get it. You don't get meatloaf like you get out of the oven. You don't get anything like the meatloaf you get out of the oven. So um, either way, <coughs> pardon me, I would say no. You know, I, I think, number one, you'll be very disappointed. And number two, there's no proof method right now. Okay. Rita Mastin says, you recommended newbies to ingredient can. Is there a book that you know of that has single products listed um, ex with the exception of salt and pepper? The ball book has a ton of ingredients and not, and a lot not available in my area. I would rather ingredient can. Absolutely. The National Center for Home Food Preservation has the complete guide to home canning. And I will put a link down below for you. It, in my opinion, is the must-have book if you're canning. I use it as a reference, as a guide against other books to make sure that I'm canning things for the proper time and pressure, okay? Um, you know, when I'm trying a new recipe, which I don't do very often. But if I do do something, I want to make sure that I'm doing it um, safely. And so that is your book. And the second backup source to it is the website. So I will, both of the website will be down there multiple times, I'm sure, but I will put a link directly for the book to, for you. Thank you, Rita. Good, good question. Um, Seabass, good to see you, my friend. What's the reason ham can't be pressure canned? 
because it's cured and because they haven't tested it yet. That would be it. Um, you know, okay, so I understand why you're afraid to eat it. Um, it's a personal decision you're going to have to make. Greg Wilterdink. Uh, where can I get reasonably priced 24-ounce canning jars? Okay, stay off Walmart's website. Stay off Amazon's website. Okay? Go to uh, Menards if they have them there, even though they do tend to be pricier. I don't, I don't know where you're from, you know? Um, try Target. Try Meyer, Try your local grocery store. Try your local hardware store. Um, Ace Hardware is, has been known to have them. Try... Um, Dollar General, but don't get the new ones that they have. True Living. The jars are good. The lids are not. Um, any, I mean, there's tons of places. Tons of places. So I would check those out. Online, I don't know of any place I trust. Um, let's see. So Jupiter's, Jupiter's Rum. Can shank or butt hams be canned? I've seen both yes and no, so I thought I'd get advice here. If they are hams, if they are cured hams... There's no approved method, okay? Um, if they, if those are just the cuts, um, the pork shank or the pork butt, yeah, absolutely. Um, I have a pork butt canning video. You can use that for any kind of pork. Really good stuff. Uh, Debbie Hall, how long do you keep your can jars beyond the 18-month recommendation? Until I finish them. But the deal is, Debbie, they're not there to look at. They are there to use and then rotate and put new behind it, okay? So don't make it a goal to save it for years or to wait to save it for an emergency. You have to be able to know what to do with it before an emergency hits. You have to know whether or not you like it, quite seriously. So um, use it and then backfill it. Uh, Marla Busby. I was wondering about canning potatoes, russet or red. What method do you use to prepare them? The link will be down below uh, for canning potatoes for the National Center for Home Food Preservation. Patty Swart. Um, okay, so my question is, how do you know when a canned item is halfway covered? How do you how do you know when a canned item is halfway covered? Do you go by the one inch headspace or the product inside the jar? Okay, okay, so after you've, okay, I'm reading the rest of your, and there's a lot. So after, you go by the, when you fill the jar, one inch headspace, okay, and that's the meatballs and the liquid, or the meat, one inch headspace. When you put meat into the canner, whether it is raw packed or hot packed, okay, it will continue to cook. First, it'll continue to cook for hot packed, it will cook for raw packed, okay, which will alter your headspace, I mean, when you cook meat, it shrinks. So that's why when you're cooking raw pack, you know, meat, you'll notice that the jar does not have that inch headspace anymore after you pull it out. And that's why a lot of people freak out because the liquid's not covering the chicken or whatever. And it's a non-issue. It's a non-issue. Okay. I've, I covered that in my most recent ugly chicken video and my most recent. Yeah. Anyway, look for it. Um, my pork butt video for January. There you go. That's what I covered it in. So, um, you're fine, okay, as long as the headspace that you started off with is good and that the entire content of the jar does not go under half because of siphoning, not because of cooking. Okay, so I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that I've got all my bases covered here. When you're hot packing something, if your contents siphon and you lose half the liquid, then you need to do something with it, okay? It's not it's not good to go on the shelf. If you are raw packing something, it's normal because it's cooking. Gosh, I hope that was clear. Kind of clear as mud. I know, I get it, but um, hopefully that works. Okay. Um, Linda Plank. Can you use a steam canner to do fruit, mandarin oranges, oranges, or would water be, bath be better? As long as you're not going over 40 minutes, they are one and the same. Seriously. And so I really like the steam canner. Velocity, <laughs> a.k.a. Sloth Mom, says, Have you ever canned bread? And if you have, do you have a recipe? 
do not, would not, highly recommend not to. I have a link down below where I talk all about that. Um, I'll leave it there. Cindy Wirtz. So my question is, how do you feel about Rebel Canning? Um, I have never done any, but I see all these videos for canning milk, butter, bacon, recanning things like cheese sauce. Not sure I want to try it and makes me worry about someone who is new to canning. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are, this is why I am now teaching nothing but approved methods because we have so many new canners in our community that it scares me to death that people will can bread, okay? Um, if the world were coming to an end and it was either do it or lose it, I would can my butter. Would I can milk? I got no reason to ever do it, ever. Um, and cheese sauce, to me, makes absolutely no sense at all. But, you know, um, so no, I would not. And I recommend that, okay, the one thing that I do say all the time is your kitchen, your rules. Your kitchen, your rules, your responsibility. You have to take 120% responsibility for anything that happens to you and yours should you decide to go off script. Nobody else's fault but yours. Um, Cheryl Umloff says, my question is, is store-bought orange juice safe to can? Yes, my friend Rachel over at that 1870s homestead um, canned orange juice. And she found the method for it, and uh, she said it's good. So, yep. Uh, Melissa Morris, I canned beef roast and the jars didn't fill up. Are they safe to eat? They sealed just half of the jar is air. You didn't give me enough information, Melissa. So I'm going to assume that you raw packed it, okay, which is what we were just talking about. So if you raw packed it and you did it according to the guidelines so that you have an inch headspace, okay, and then you canned it, it cooked during the can, excuse me, the canning process. So it would shrink and there would not be liquid to cover it. Um, they all seal just half as air is because they cooked during the process and there's no air in there. If there was air in there, you would have garbage, okay? Um, you'd have deadly garbage. So I guess first I need to know, how did you cook it? How did you pressure can it? Um, Shelly Johnston, I have noticed that jar sizes and recipe instructions like pints and quarts are different than two cup pints and four cup quarts. Frustrating for someone new to canning. Any thoughts for clarification? No. Because I don't know whose recipes you're talking about, okay? Um, there are measurements on some canning jars that tell you one cup, two cup, um, but it is not like filled to the rim. You know what I mean? Um, so a pint is two cups and a quart is four cups, pretty much any way you measure it. So, um, I, I guess I would need more clarification before I could give you a better, better answer. So, okay guys, I'm going to be running late with this, but... It will be up, and I will have all the links that I promised you. Remember, if you have uh, any questions, to drop them in the comments section below. And it would help me if uh, y'all didn't take over my job and answer them. <laughs> okay? But um, if I see that you've already gotten a whole bunch of answers from people, I'm not going to answer it. Okay? Because I couldn't get all the questions that I got today. Uh, so uh, definitely check out the links down below. Uh, check out previous canning chats if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out to me if you have an immediate need. And uh, until next week, have a great day and be safe.